fueled up, ready to go. Now we're gonna check for our pH. Let's go. We pretty much applied uh, carbonized rice hull, dolomite, dufos, humic acid, and microbials, uh, my uh, cosume. And now we're just checking our readings. So on the thing, we took our soil and we got a seven, which is pretty good. It's more on the alkalinian side because when we're gonna flow uh, salts and salt fertilizer, salt-based fertilizer, it's gonna lower our pH. So we're gonna start off with a higher pH before we plant. So seven's good. So this one is good. So we're gonna go check down the line for each additional one. And we're gonna do it throughout the whole field to see what our amendments. I did buy uh, eight more sacks of dolomite, which is a high calcium, high magnesium uh, sulfate. So it's, it's one of the best things, like Epsom salt with uh, calcium in it. So now we're able to get everything uh, in balance before we start the field, which is really going to promote a really fast take by the plants and then uh, a quick uh, grow. Because when you get out of balance with your pH, you're not going to have happy crops and happy plants. So and then you're not going to have happy bank account or anything else if you don't balance out your pH before you plant. They make it a lot easier if you have machinery, but if you have about this, this is about a 1,200 uh, square meter plot. It's going to be about four to 5,000 plants, anywhere between 30 centimeters and 45 centimeters between each other in a triangle pattern. We have about 16 to 17 rows. Uh, average length is about 40 uh, linear meters. So it's, it's pretty good. We're having the guys swap out the irrigation, so we're going to kind of time lapse that as I go and check randomly throughout the field to see where I need to apply more dolomite. But right now at our uh, worst situation, it's already raised up pretty much within that week. So we're gonna get the irrigation flowing, raise the hills, and then row cover it and let the bacteria do its thing. Then hopefully in about another two to three weeks, we'll transplant into the field. So let's get to it. Now stretch it out straight. And Nothing more enjoyable than watching Trina work the tiller. It's a good forearm workout. So we're gonna go check on our superheat uh, hot peppers. We're gonna do another red hot because it could have been weather. We've been having really crazy weather where it's really hot and then uh, really rainy back to back, which makes it really tough to do uh, farming or seedling starting. So let's go take a look at these guys and see what's up with them. It's been about a month and a week, I would say. So I'm having them restart all the seeds. So yeah, so these are starting to pop now, but they need they need a uh, nutrient, but they're very inconsistent. You can see that this, this is what would not be a good germination, where you have other ones, the looks like that's a pumpkin or squash or calabasa. That one's very easy, but your sealy, 
they, they needed more heat. They will do it eventually, but it probably wasn't the right time without a heat mat or anything, but they're much drier now. I would say it's pretty nice looking at them now. The soil looks a lot better, but I'm not sure how much will or won't germinate. Ways we alleviate that was we'd used um, the domes. The domes really work for getting all that stuff ready and even, but it might also have been just uh, too early in the season to start seeds without more protective measures. So, you know, you live and learn. It's better to get that now out of the way and then you can actually make some changes later. That's right, you show that cow who's boss. You tell Poppy Jones you're in charge. Let's get back to work, stop messing around. <laughs>